uh, this hysterosalpine gorgias that the tubes are not good. So probably this test is a little bit controversial and I do not perform it personally, but some people say that it is good. My practice show me that this is not a good test, not, not reliable, let me say. Good, but not reliable. And what else, of course, I also already uh, mentioned chronic endometritis, embryoscopy. A lot of people we are doing now in our uh, department, embryoscopy, because after, let me say, missed abortion, she's coming and said, what is the problem? We perform genetic testing. We take the embryo and say we send it for genetic testing. And the genet genetic testing says everything is normal. And she asked me, why? What happened? I don't know. If you perform embryoscopy, you can find really amazing things like uh, missing uh, legs and the face uh, anomalies and uh, uh, different tumors on the, on the spinal cord, everything. So embryoscopy is really, really good before abortion. If you decide to perform abortion, you can make before this hysteroscopy, embryoscopy, to see, to evaluate the embryo. And if there is a problem to take a part or to, to, uh, to make a picture, just to explain what is the reason, because next time she'll come again, she asks you what is the reason and you must answer her. Abortion, of course, it can be done because the uh, gestational sac is so small, you can go inside, you can cut, and you can remove exactly the gestational sac without destroying the entire endometrium with uh, curettage. So I think it's a good, not for every patient, but of course, and missing IOD and IOS, of course, it's really simple without searching blindly. You can go with a hysteroscope in 30 seconds to remove every, every device which is inside the uterine cavity. So you can see how many applications say have hysteroscopy, how many applications. So not only one or two, like, like someone you mentioned, like small polyps. No, you have a lot of applications which can apply in your practice. And uh, of course, is this office hysteroscopy system? No, that's why I show you this case here, because in fact, you must have everything for this system. Yes, but it must be as simple as possible. You do not need so big uh, towers to have everything inside. You need something really, really simple. It's not necessary to be this. You can buy everything you want. But my suggestion, if you work in a private gynecological practice, don't invest too much money in a big endoscopic tower because it's too expensive. You do not need for diagnostic, you do not need so big, so big tower. It's a lot of money and you have to pay for this. And you have to offer to your patients a uh, procedure on a reasonable price that they will be satisfied. You will have the opportunity to give the right diagnosis to solve the problem with everything and not invest too much money because you are not a hospital. You do not have a budget of uh, 1 million euro to invest. You have a small budget, you have to make everything as simple as possible, but enough to work completely and to solve the problems. What is really important? Uh, what, because we are speaking about laser, but the question is how to implement the laser in your practice. You have to know what you will perform. You, make, you, you must make your uh, business plan, what you will do, because this is the main question. If you want to perform only aesthetic procedures, you do not need this one, okay? If you perform only operative, maybe you do not need laser, etc. But if you want to solve all these problems we are discussing today, you have, you must have all this uh, equipment to perform the right procedures and to uh, achieve the best results. You must to know how many patients you will have every month. What is your investment? Where you will do this? Do you need anesthesiologist? Do you plan to make something big or only a small pathology? What do you want to do? And then after this simple calculation, you understand if it's necessary to buy the laser, to buy a hysteroscope, ultrasound, etc. Because some doctors, they even do not need ultrasound. If you perform only pap smears and microbiology smears, you do not need all these things. You need only one uh, gynecological chair and that's it. But if you, if you want to improve your practice to, to implement more new things in your practice, 
we need to make this business plan and to know how to implement this. It is really good for the patient because just imagine if a patient come in your practice and they said, I have a polyp or they ask me, I was on a, you are the third gynecologist I'm visiting. And one said that I have polyp. The second said, I do not have polyp. And you, what are you are saying? I said, I don't know, probably you have polyp. And what is your decision? Because you go to another one and she's just circling around with the doctors asking if I have a polyp or not. No, I'm giving the choice. If you want, I can perform hysteroscopy in a minute and you will see you have a polyp and I will remove it and everything will finish today and now, not going again in another doctor. Uh, of course, they are. They, they, it is uh, their uh, own cho choice. They can accept. They can say, okay, I can make this. I want to make this. I don't want to go to another doctor. But she must know that she is in control. She must be calm. Because for hysteroscopy without anesthesia, it's really important. I will not uh, speak too much about office hysteroscopy without anesthesia because it's a, it's a whole workshop only for this. And we have to discuss the preparation and everything. But it's not a big deal to make this, to make a hysteroscopy without anesthesia because it's, you need some uh, short learning curve how to go inside the cervical canal. And that's it. Uh, what are disadvantages of core pain? This is the thing we were scared about hysteroscopy, the pain. But you know, it's not obligatory to perform procedure. You can start, usually I suggest to my patient, look, I will start without anesthesia. If it's painful, just raise your hand and say, I, I feel pain. Okay, we'll finish immediately. It's not necessary, not obligatory. But in more than 80%, we can perform without problem the hysteroscopy without anesthesia. So why not to try? Even in that case, I can, I can uh, not charge her if there is an attempt for hysteroscopy. And she'll be thankful because next time she said, okay, the doctor even try. He is the only one who not offering just again come in two months or in 15 days. He tried to, to, to help me, to, to, to show me something different, try to offer me a new procedure which will solve my problem and she will appreciate that. And uh, of course, this is the main thing, the pain for the patient. What about the doctor? As I already said, you can feel satisfaction because everything is your, your hand. You can make the decision, you can perform the procedure, you can solve the problem, and everything is depending on you. Totally autonomy. Of course, you will not depend from the anesthesiologists, which are very busy and really difficult to find in the right moment. And it's outpatient surgery. You do not need to schedule uh, operation room. And uh, no, it's uh, today you cannot make because we have three operations, so it, there's no place for your hysteroscopy. Schedule it for the next one because you need to make this hysteroscopy in the first phase of the endometrial cycle. So you will wait another and another month, and it's not a good idea. The problem, of course, for the doctors, not for every patient, as we discussed, of hysteroscopy, you cannot perform everything, but nearly more of 80% of the pathology can be, can be done in outpatient settings. Not obligatory without anesthesia, but in our patient setting without operative room. And of course, need of training, equipment, to set protocols to perform this procedure, etc. For me, very interesting that healthcare system, even in Bulgaria, do not support this. Even it's cost effective. It's cost effective. In Slovenia, I, I'm not pretty sure when I was to, uh, I used to work there, they do not pay for outpatient hysteroscopy. I don't know how it's now. Yes. Yes, and it's it's reason because if the uh, if the uh, healthcare system pays for one hospital uh, hysteroscopy, I don't know, four uh, hundred euro for outpatient, it will cost less than let me say hundred. It's four times cheaper, but they do not want to invest in this. I don't know why. And what is the problem for healthcare system? Of course, none. But it's a, it's a question of politics and a decision of, uh, of the healthcare uh, responsible ministers. So this is a small video. This is in fact how we do it because my hysteroscope is my stethoscope. It's a, it's a sentence from uh, Linda Bradley from United States. And uh, we like this sentence very, very much because it's really describing our 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 job you see he, she's in the in the hospital 
talking with the doctor and everything is here, hysteroscope, ultrasound. At the moment, you can perform this. This is another hysteroscopic system. You can see even hair held twice source. It's it's not a, it's with battery. What? No, only cuff pressure. You can see only diagnostic. That's it. Then you can finish. It's not necessary to make operation, but if you see a polyp, it's not a big deal just to grasp it or to cut it and to, 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 to remove everything. That's it. This is our hospital. And uh, this is the main idea. The laser is a new device which you can implement in your practice, but with hysteroscopy, you can open a lot of opportunities in your practice. You can improve it really, really, really bad. You, it, it can be just perfect. Because just think, this is the main idea. Just imagine if you have ultrasound, if you have hysteroscope, and if you had a laser, how many procedures you can, what we can, you can do? Nearly everything. If you have, what you cannot do with these devices? Do you have any idea what? Okay, oncology, of course. Of course, you cannot make any oncological procedures in that case. But everything else, the, the, the rest of the pathology is only which can be uh, made with laparoscopy. Everything is down and can be performed. Uh, this is, of course, Linda Bradley from United States and her proverb. And this is our office, as you already seen. With the, the only thing is missing here is the laser. And that's it. Do not uh, think only about removing small polyps. You have in your hands a lot of opportunities with the laser and the hysteroscope, a lot of opportunities. Uh, Dr. Kozarev and Dr. Ksenia explain you a lot of opportunities in aesthetic medicine and gynecology, aesthetic gynecology and also dermatology, et cetera. But you can include also operative activities in your practice. This is endless possibilities of work, really, really. I think that it's really, really good to think always outside the box because you can use it for maybe a new application, why not? Something new which you will discover in your practice. And uh, of course, all these things I described here is my own experience. Of course, uh, we, we do a lot of, uh, of work. We do not have publications, etc., because we are hard workers in the hospital. But everything is, which is shown here on this uh, presentation, the other presentation, is our own experience. And I can explain you a lot about devices, about different devices. We have everything in our hospital. We have Versoscope. We have this device. We have Storz. We have Olympus. We have Morselator. We have three different types of laser, everything. And we try everything to, to improve our practice and to make it best. So uh, if you have any questions, I can support and answer about all these steps we, 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 we pass to, to reach this level of knowledge and experience. Of course, I will share my experience with you with, uh, with pleasure. If any questions, Okay, we'll proceed with another one. I have three presentations for today. If it's too boring, just strike your hands and stop this, please. <laughs> and I will stop it immediately. I don't know. 
if there there are no questions usually one one professor said that uh, there are two two opportunities the presentation is too simple you, you know everything as i told you and it's too complicated and you cannot understand nothing <laughs> i don't know uh, if you have any questions please ask uh if uh, is there someone who is performing coffee hysteroscopy from you <laughs> yeah oh. And is, the, is there someone who is interesting to perform this and want to study about this, to make it in your practice? If you want, if you... It's again, this is a really big private hospital, really big, you know, a lot. We have more than 2,200 deliveries. We have a lot of operations, but you have to offer to the patient the choice. You, if you want, you can, because you know, the price of operative hysteroscopy in my hospital, as I told you about outpatient office hysteroscopy, the price is something about 100, 190 euros something. But if you want in the operative room, you will have same doctor, same uh, equipment. Everything is the same. You have anesthesia, yes? And you will pay 500 euro. And she said 300 euro, I can be, buy something for me and for my children. No, I will go without, or I go out outpatient. But the patient has the choice. It's the same like abortion. You can offer surgical and medical abortion, but it's good to offer. If you go in the in the in the store and someone uh, give you one kind of wine, what you'll say? Only one. But if you have a choice for three or four or two, even from two kind of different wines, it's good because you can choose this which is best for you, maybe a little bit expensive, maybe a little bit cheaper. It's up to you, it's your decision. But you have to offer to the patient the choice. History and laser, of course, this is the next step because uh, we perform hysteroscopy since a long, a long time, but implement the uh, laser uh, relatively soon. I think we start five or six years ago. And uh, I will speak about the laser in generally. And um, you, as you already uh, heard from my colleagues, the laser is not the, a new device. It's relatively old, but uh, it started be used in uh, aesthetic medicine, etc. And we implement this knowledge in the gynecology and we, we find a lot of opportunities. I will uh, run just quickly from uh, in this presentation, because the beginning, of course, we already mentioned endoscopy. This is the first attempt to go inside the uterine cavity to see what happened inside, uh, try to treat it, to remove some uh, structures inside the uretra. Afterwards, we have a new devices, of course, which removing from the polyp, perform Pantaleoni, endometrial polyp. A lot of things happened after that. We have this first attempt with CO2 laser, which I already mentioned. And Jacamu with this magnification microhysteroscope and uh, Betoki with his uh, see and treat method about the vag vag vaginoscopically approach. In fact, uh, there was a fairy tale. I, I saw Betoki, he was twice in our hospital and he was like, why you perform a vaginoscopic outpatient hysteroscopy? Uh, some people said that a lot of nuns are living around the hospital in Bari where, where he works. And uh, they are virgins, so you can not, not put a speculum inside. So he's going with hysteroscope inside the, the, the cervix and the uterine cavity. So it's this vaginoscopical approach without putting a speculum inside the vagina. This is the thing which pushed this procedure and this technique vaginoscopically, outpatient hysteroscopy. And outpatient, why? Because they do not have anesthesiologists give them anesthesia. Laser, of course, as already my colleagues mentioned, it's this one. Of course, we want to use it to fight with this laser, to use it well. Uh, Laser is not, not something uh, new. It's uh, all around us. In the disco, in the shops, 
in the pointers, the laser is all around us. So it's not something dangerous because when you say laser, oh, you, usually people think about uh, these swords from the Star Wars cutting everything. It's not so dangerous. Of course, if you know what you do and how to perform this, maybe you have a, a good, uh, good uh, device and good uh, weapon in your hands and you can solve a lot of uh, health problems to your patients. And uh, probably someone have seen this book, 1994, have you seen it? It is a book about laser operative laparoscopy and hysteroscopy at last. But you already forget about this, yes? Nobody knows about this book. And it's, it's a long ago, but uh, Jacques uh, Donet uh, used uh, CO2 laser. He tried to remove some myomas with this, but uh, there was complication, pain because of the necrosis of the myoma and they just reject this method for a long time until the our colleagues from dermatology start to use lasers in their practice for a lot of applications as already xenia mentioned all these things you can perform laser and we decided to go from aesthetic and from reconstructive surgery to operative surgery. And the evolution start like this. We decided that the laser is strong enough to be used in the operating room. And this gave us this. This is the equipment, this is the laser. You can use not only for this, for, for operative, but for ambulatory aesthetic and reconstructive surgery. Uh, there is no on the market, another one which can make all these things at one with one device, surely. I can give 100% guarantee about this. If you speak about photona, photona is aesthetic, tightening, etc., but no operative. If you speak about CO2, about family lift, about uh, Mona Lisa touch, you have aesthetic, but you know they do have operative applications at all. If you speak about uh, NDIAC, which can be used also for operations, photona NDIAC, it cannot be used because they have one simple type of fiber. Here you have different fibers with different applications. Yes. And you use the right fiber with the right device for the right problem, for the proper problem. You do not need to experiment because if you need to, um, how to say, to solve a problem, to, to clean something, you need special device for this. You will not try to implement something to, to make some new creatures, etc., to solve this. So this is the machine which implements everything. If you speak about operative surgery, there is a company which offer mainly products for operation, uh, operative lasers, biolitic. But the problem is they do not have aesthetics. They can offer you only for operations, only for upper hysteroscopy, but not for aesthetics. So if you invest your money in a product, you must use this device every single day several times because you have to pay your, your money for the credits for buying this equipment. So it must be uh, useful every single day and every single minute for most of your patients. Of course, different fibers, as I already mentioned. And again, not only cutting, laser cutting, but all this applications we already mentioned. You can see, not only for simple diagnosis. Of course, you will receive all this information. Tomorrow in our practical session, we will try to show you some cases. Uh, Dr. Xenia, I will try to show you some cases in operative hysteroscopy. You will try to, to, to make this. So we will see how it can be used. You can see the settings. Of course, it's very nice that this, because let me say some other company, they offer application with a button. One button, you, you, you press the button and you have the settings already settled. Here, you can be a developer person. You can change the settings. You can improve the settings according to your patients. You can increase the power, you can decrease, you can make continuous or pulse mode. So you have the unlimited opportunities to work. 
Of course, you can try it now. As I asked the, 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 the people from the VO Laser Balkan, Mila and Nico, just to, if you want to try it, you can have it in your office. You can test it, right? For one or two weeks with their support, just to see if it's okay for your practice. If you are feeling you, you have this machine in your office, you try to, to operate and to make some procedures for vaginal tightening, etc. And you see that everything is good, patient satisfied, uh, you are convenient with this device, and you, you, you can take the, the decision to invest in this or not. But this is really important just to test it. Because the opportunities are so big, you have to find the best one for you. And of course, you will decide what to choose after testing and after trying. Of course, the, the, the main thing, that's why I'm asking for questions, that the main thing is not only to share apples, but to share ideas. I cannot say that I'm an expert in uh, using laser. I have a small experience about aesthetic procedure. I have more experience about operative, operative uh, gynecology surgical, surgery. But maybe there are a lot of things I can learn from you, from your experience, from your ideas, and uh, we can make it better with better results and probably find a new application of these devices. Of course, we need help from the company and I think they will support us. And let, let the force of the laser be with you. <laughs> so uh, that's why I want to describe just, we start from hysteroscopy. Now I implement the laparoscopy, uh, the, 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 the laser with hysteroscopy, just to see that it can be included in your practice without any problems. And you can make a lot of things with it. Any questions? Waiting for? Physiological. <laughs> uh, physiological. Uh, According to this all, uh, just to go back, because you mentioned that some of you already, sorry for that. I want to go back in this. What kind of pathology you perform hysteroscopy from you? you? What kind of pathology usually you do? All of this with office, with small. Uh, do you small? Do, do you have uh, so small hysteroscope five point five? Um, no. And okay. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that uh, it, it will be useful for your practice, let me say, for chronic endometritis embryoscopy? Probably for... Five point five is not is without working channel. Without working channel, just diagnostic with a working channel. The smallest one is seven point five, and the largest one for bigger things is nine point five. Okay, this is the hysteroscope as I already show you, this one, and if you have a camera, and you have, you in fact need only this <coughs> optics and hysteroscope, and. Uh, Speaking about hysteroscope, it's 5.5. This is Betoki style hysteroscope. It was developed from Betoki. It's, as you see, it's not a round, but it's oval shape. We're going inside the cervix and it's 5.5. But because usually people say that the diameter is too big and we cannot perform without anesthesia. If you remove this, 
you can use it only like this. And the outer diameter is 3.8. When you put IUD, it's the same diameter. Who is putting IUD with anesthesia? So what is the difference? If you want to perform hysteroscopy just for diagnostic, without anesthesia. For people with a pulse, because you have to suppress a peripheral abortion. No, vaginoscopic. Vaginoscopic means that you take all this thing like this, you put without speculum. You can't push all this, uh, yes. even the IUD without uh, forwarding the user and the service. It depends. In some of cases, you can, but in some, you can't. If you start performing office hysteroscopy vaginoscopically, you will see that you can go inside every every uterine cavity, every uterine cavity. Okay, ninety six percent stenosis, menopausal, without touching cervical, without touching nothing, only hysteroscope. Really, it's really it's really simple. We call it untouched hysteroscopy. Yes. Vaginoscopically, no speculum, nothing, because putting this dangerous device in the vagina, it's not pleasure for, for anyone. That's why you, you just go inside. Okay, there are special maneuvers just to, to follow the cervical canal. There are some uh, learning curves. You need to pass this. It's not a problem. Tomorrow, I'll bring this training model. You will see it's really realistic. Uh, it's made from latex, and it's moving exactly like a real, a real uterus. And you, you take the, you, uh, you, you feel the, 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 the going inside the uterine cavity, like a real one. And you'll see that there is nothing, nothing dangerous. Of course, as I mentioned, you can stop the procedure. But look, if you remove this, you have inflow, you have uh, fluid going inside, you have a working channel. So if you, go, if you go with this, you can take even a biopsy with this only, without outflow. Outflow, you need it only if there is a bleeding, because the, the view is not good. With outflow, you just wash the uterine cavity. So if there is no bleeding, you perform this procedure in the early uh, secretory phase of the, of the cycle. You need only this. It's not necessary to use a pump. For diagnostic, you can see a cuff. You can use a cuff. Yes, with pump, you, there is anesthesiologist they're using this. Three liters, they put in a cuff and they pump it and you have a usual pressure. And even this tube, is a tube for intravenous uh, uh, infusion. So small diameter is not because look, the diameter is so small. The tube is not, it, it's not necessary to be this big. Intravein the set, you put it in the, in the back, pressure connecting here and that's it. And if the patient feel pain, because you just see approximately what is the pressure. Uh, if the pressure is approximately 70, 80 millimeter, she will not feel pain. The pain is coming after this, after 100, 110 millimeters. And if she said, I feel pain, just close this. Waiting for 30 seconds, if there's a, there are contractions, wait for 30 seconds, it's open again. Does it have no. no. So that's why it, it, the, the cost of this, if you have everything, uh, camera and everything, it is not so big. It is less than approximately, 1,500 euro, everything this. So it's not, a, it's not a big investment, even for hospital. I'm speaking investment about single gynecologist. For a hospital, 1,500 1, euro is nothing, <laughs> as you know. So any questions? Um, we, we believe when we start talking with uh, Professor Haimovich, he was coming, he's organizing this uh, hysteroscopic congresses, etc. He's really, really uh, excellent professional about hysteroscopy and pioneer about using the laser in uh, gynecology. Um, we discussed that uh, we believe that someday, like uh, 15 years ago, one of our old gynecologists said, uh, I asked him, can you use your ultrasound? He said, no, I do not need ultrasound. My two fingers are my ultrasound. And now if you explain to a, a resident that you are not using ultrasound, only your two fingers, you'll be like stupid one. 
we don't know what to do. And we believe that uh, will come a time that uh, all people, all gynecologists, all residents will perform office hysteroscopy because it's not nothing, nothing special. It's not a big deal to perform this really. And it's really easy and it's comfortable for the, not for everyone. Again, not for, not hundred percent, not on every case. But if you perform 50% of your cases without anesthesia in the outpatient settings, you will solve a lot, you spare a lot of money, you save a lot of, of time, a lot of pain, a lot of anesthesia, operating room. When we start perform this, okay, even in the beginning, you can make it anesthesia, but we take all this outpatient hysteroscopy in one small room, Unfortunately, I do not have, it's so small room like this. And we perform every day in this room, approximately six to 10 hysteroscopies with this device. And our operating room is free and we're using it for, for laparoscopy and for bigger procedures. And this is a big income from the hospital because you will not schedule your laparoscopy because of uh, lack of place in the operating room. You will improve your practice and you will have today not five, but 15 operations. No, this is, uh, we, are we are sending this, we have, I think six or seven. We just sterilize it, yes, yes. But, yes. How do you prepare a patient for, for office hysteroscopy? Uh, I uh, think uh, about smear. Uh, do you uh, need um, cervical smears? Or no, something? we do not even, we do not clean the vagina. If, there, if we ask her and she said, I have some smear, I have some discharge or something. Okay, this is a problem, we won't perform office. But if we just ask, if there are any problem, no, it's not necessary to make nothing. You will see with the hysteroscope what is going on inside. And if you see that we're going inside the vagina, you see that there are some uh, discharge like a candida or something, you'll stop, of course, it's not necessary to proceed. And, or the epithelium of the vagina is too red or too inflammatory. You won't make a hysteroscopy, you will not proceed it, but it's not good. I'll finish now. We'll come next month, probably. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll go for the last presentation. Probably you're too tired now. Uh, it's really will be quick as uh, is a question about the physics, about the laser, which already my colleagues described very, very well. I will just run through this. Uh, in fact, the, 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 the laser is just a light. It's nothing dangerous, it's a light, but it's a special light. You are not scared from the light. We are going to, to, the, to, the, to the beach just to take a little bit more light from the sun. And this is the laser. This is a light, but special light, which can be used for a special purposes. This is the theory, of course, basic characteristics, of course, already mentioned. I won't talk about this. It's a stem phase. Again, the physics, direction, visible, invisible part, of course, more chromatic. It's a light, but it's really strong light. Because if uh, Dr. Kozarev mentioned the, 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 the size of the fiber, here in our application, you have a conical fiber. And at the end of the tip is two millimeter only. And you have a really powerful uh, light uh, at the end of the tip. So that's why you can cut, you can coagulate everything with this. Just pay attention that one watt is 1000 times more than 100 watt lamp. If you try as a child to touch 100 watt lamp, it's very painful. It's very hot. Just imagine how strong is the laser. All these things we already passed through. I won't stop and uh, will not. I just want to mention one thing which is very important for, especially for operative uh, uh, application. These four things, power, wavelength, distance, and irradiation time. You can play with this and you can make everything in the operating theater. If I have any mistakes about the physics, please, because I'm not so familiar with the physical part of the laser, but 
the power. If you want more energy, just increase the power you have here. You can see one, two, three, up to 15. There are even diode lasers with power up to 45. Uh, it's not necessary, of course. Uh, I have seen application of 45 watts in the operating field for myoma. The professor Hemovich go inside the uterine, uh, the, the, the myoma. He pushed the pedal with really strong energy and myoma just disappear. Yes, not explode, but disappear. It's, 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 it's missing, it's, 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 there is no myoma. I have seen this procedure several times, but it's, it's really like magic for me. I, I do not perform it until now, but it's, it's really possible for this because you have really strong energy on a single place and the myoma just disappear at once. You have a, a hole on the place there was a myoma. It's just a hole. And after a few months, it just disappeared and no myoma, no operation, nothing. Wavelength, of course, it's fixed. As we mentioned, 1470, you cannot play with this. But the distance, what you want, if you want to cut, you have to touch. If you had just coagulation, you will go a little bit back. And the time, if you touch and you keep more time pedal on, you have more energy, of course, and you have the, you have the proper changes in the tissue. So this is, these are the things you, you, you can play with during your operation, your practice. Uh -huh. no, no. Ne, nie widzę. A sadzie, do. To jest isto. This is the the thing we already uh, see. Uh, I, I can just mention this NDIAC and DAUT laser are very similar according to operating uh, procedures. If you have NDIAC in your practice, you can use it, similar application like DAUT laser. It's not necessary to change. If you have NDIAC, because you mentioned... Huh? NDIAC, no, it's not because it's, it's, a, it's a water, it's, it's falling, the temperature is falling, but... Um, you do not have proper fibers. I think NDIAC, I don't know which you mentioned NDIAC. You have NDIAC in your practice? Yes. Which company? Which company uh, is manufactured? Do they have a different fibers for different applications? NDIAC. Because I, I was speaking that there is no difference in the operating uh, procedures between NDIAC and diode laser about the operations. Ah, and this is the problem because da. Nie NDIAC. Aha, nie neodim. Mislim sam da je neodim. Ah, it's been some zoom. Posto, uh, uh, NDIAC, uh, there is one company which is offering NDIAC, but they have only single uh, time of fiber, uh, type of fiber, and you cannot use it in different application. So what we can do, of course, there are different uh, application. In usually, uh, as Xenia mentioned, uh, in the aesthetic procedures, we, did, we need temperature up to 50. Here, we search for temperature more than 60 and even more than 100 degrees because we need to cut and you we need to calculate. And that's why the, the power is much, much higher. The time is more and usually in contact mode. Of course, you can use this laser in uh, every time of uh, media, contact, non-contact mode. And, uh, of course, it is not interacting with other devices in the operating room. If there is a camera, etc., it will not interact like with electricity uh, devices. Small energy, of course, you can use it only for heating and bigger, of course, for coagulation and cutting. And this is a picture according to 
operative uh, energies. You can see what is the damage performed from the monopolar. Look, cutting, necrosis. And um, in our practice, we have seen one case because you usually perform myomectomy, laparoscopic myomectomy with uh, electricity, cutting myoma, extracting, inoculating it, and make a stitch. And there was a case uh, during the pregnancy, the rupture of the, uter of the uterus because of improper healing of the place, because it's a great damage, a great necrosis. If you see with uh, doubt laser, and there is another picture afterwards, you will see that the, 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 the deep um, destroy of the tissue is not so, so big. It's only half millimeter in depth. So in fact, you have healthy tissue, which can be stitched and can heal in a few months and you can make uh, immediately a, a future pregnancy. You can see the damage of CO2 because it's again state that CO2 is an operative laser. You can see what is the, what is the damage. Again, a big necrosis. And the pain was great, like the case of Jacques Donnet in 1994, because of the necrosis. And this is direct, you can see. You can uh, have with Diot and Ndiac laser nearly no carbonization, but you have mainly stimulation. So if you make a myomectomy or something like this, laparoscopically, I mean, you will have only stimulation that the tissue will have a proper time and opportunities to regener regenerate and to have a healthy scar for the future pregnancy. This is a big, big, big advantage of this laser. You can see the electricity, watch make electricity, and you can see what made the laser. And this is a great, there is a study, of course, mostly we probably know there is Dr. Angelic, Luka Angelic from Subutica Novi Sad. He has a really interesting uh, study about uh, treating endometriosis, endometrioma with laser and with electricity. The same operator, Dr. Angelic, make endometrioma with electricity and with laser. And they count the level FSH and antimuller hormone before and after the operation. And there is a statistical difference between electricity and the laser. Laser was really do not harm the ovarian tissue. You can use laser even for drilling. You know that some people, they make uh, not drilling, but grilling of ovaries. They grill the ovary, it's, it's just destroyed. With the laser, you can make it really superficial, only five millimeter in depth. And you will keep the tissue really, really safe and healthy for future pregnancy. So this is the one. We have tried during the laparoscopy to cut very near to the, to the, to the bowels. No problem because the, the penetration is so superficial and it's really, really useful. You can, you will not, you will not make a contact mode. Yes, but non-contact. You just go near and press the pedal and you have calculation, but not so big vessels, not so big vessels. But usually, no, you have, when you have myoma, You cut, you cut the capsule, you remove the pseudo capsule inside, you open it and just superficially you can, you can burn non-contact mode and the bleeding will stop. No, the, the capsule of the endometriotic, you have to remove the endometriotic, but the, the, the basis of the endometriotic capsule usually is bleeding, so it's like this uh, diffuse bleeding. It's not a big vessel, but a diffuse bleeding. And we open this, I think I have a video, uh, a video uh, clip after that. And you just coagulate with non-contact mode and it goes like this. It closes by itself. It's really nice. It's really nice. It's really work very well. And you, sp you, 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 you spare the ovarian tissue healthy without, because you know, if there is such bleeding, usually what we do, we take with the bipolar strongly and everything is grilled. And uh, I have patient 32 years old after four endometriotic cysts removed, four time operated. She's in menopause, 32. So the laser will solve all these problems. 
even we we, pre we prefer not to operate but to make uh, IVF, but it's another question. So this is the comparison between all these uh, different lasers because they are on the market. Of course, you can choose your weapon. It's not necessary to be a laser. You can use, of course, scissors. Why not? But usually when I perform with scissors, when I touch the myometrium with the scissor, they feel this touch like a punch and they feel this pain a little bit, for, especially for T-shaped and sub-septum uterus. Um, bipolar, of course. If you compare laser with this mino bipolar resectoscope, because we have also this in our hospital, um, I do not even the uh, the developer of uh, mini bipolar resectoscope, Gian Pietro Gubini, states that uh, it can be performed without anesthesia. I personally do not make this without anesthesia because the electricity is not good for the muscles. It usually makes contractions and pain. So for me, this is not good. Of course, the view and uh, changing the electrodes and everything is really not very com comfortable. And of course, the price of such device, like mini resectoscope, is, I think, compatible with the laser. But with the bipolar resectoscope, you can no not make aesthetics. So that's why you can combine a different pathology in only one device. Of course, there is a bipolar electrodes. You can use it, but again, electricity is not very good for a patient without anesthesia. In anesthesia, there is no difference, but without anesthesia, it, it can be painful for the patient. No bubbles, because if you if you if you use a resectoscope with electricity, usually if you put too much power, a lot of bubbles are created. So you need to stop to wash, to close again, to open again, just to disappear all these bubbles to have a good view. Of course, no bleeding because in the same time you are cutting and coagulating all the blood vessels. So it's uh, really quickly and it will go faster. Of course, for the, all these things we are speaking, follow guidelines if there are such in your country because in my country there, is no, there are no guidelines and everyone can use a laser. For aesthetic purposes, uh, laser can be used in my country, even from people without medical education. Of course, organize your working place, have your team, keep your records for future education, for uh, be on a safe site, not to uh, have some claims from the patient that something happened, you have everything uh, documented in your uh, laptop or system of the hospital. Of course, company support, as I said to, to, to uh, Mila and Nicola, that you can rely on our experience. If you have any questions, you can uh, call me, you can ask me, I can uh, tell you what we perform, how we perform this, with what settings, what are the results, you can call with a different application. Of course, we will try to answer you and to support you in all these, your attempts to, to implement the laser in your practice. And of course, uh, laser is not the answer of everything, as I mentioned already. It's not the best device. It's one more opportunity, which have a lot of uh, application in our gynecological practice. As we start from this morning from uh, with the presentation of my colleagues, you see that with one single device, and now we finish, you can perform a lot of things. And uh, in one small office, you can uh, solve nearly more than 90% of problems of your patients, which will make you a really successful doctor and uh, gynecologist. I think so. If you have any question. About the fiber with laparoscopy. Okay, I understand with the hysteroscope how you enter in the cavity, but with laparoscopy, how do you enter fiber through the working port with which instrument? I'll show you.
Is there? And that's an additional thing you have to no, buy? No, 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 no. It's here. It, it was here. The... Go inside with the fiber. Uh -huh. Cut. Coagulate everything. That's it. This is here. This is the whole No, no, this is not the same. It must be bigger. So this is this is it. You can put the fiber inside. You can go inside to the five millimeter trucker, and you can make it like this. You can use it as a palpator. Yes, you can use it as a cutter. When you take the fiber in, it's a usual palpator. When you go it out, you can cut. You can coagulate everything. Is this extra instrument comes if you buy the apparat or their additional charge? You have to. Nicola. Of course. Okay. I, I I think it's question for you. It's a question for you. <laughs> do you do do they accept this as a as a as a, they must buy additional this or it's inside the set? Everything is additional. Yeah, like you are getting the laser it depends uh, this business what you will do in fact this is not a big deal i think it's not expensive no, this is not this is no this is i think it's it's nothing it's usual to in the beginning you know in the beginning i i used to work with a plastic one just put a, uh, just to have it inside it was a plastic one but you have to keep in mind that this is a little bit uh, away from the plastic because you <laughs> and I did it. It's, it's it's really simple. It's not a device. It's a tube. It's nothing. Yes, but it's <laughs> you can make it uh, by your own. <laughs> uh, we are. Uh, I have some ideas. Probably we'll improve this device and we'll make something better for laparoscopy. But it's still an idea to develop this instrument to be more more simple and more useful during the procedures. Uh, this, in fact, is to go inside and to be stable, the fiber to be stable near. It's nothing special. And the fiber must be fixed here because during the procedure, if you touch the tissue, it will go out and in. But if it's fixed, you can make touch, you can make distance and everything. It's really simple. You will see we perform of uh, endometriotic cyst, even perform a hysterectomy with laser. <laughs> Once, once. It's for tomorrow or today. If you want, because no, it's only videos. If you want, you can start the last. Okay. Uh, can you can you start the last presentation, please? No, it's only video. Only video. No presentations. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Conical. U stvari to je zarezanje. Koje skos koristimo zarezanje. Conical. Ima puno energije na, na, na kraju kona, konusa. Ne, to je dva milimetarska. Ako se malo potegne, to je koagulacija. Ako se samo dotakne, to je pa rezanje. Ne, fiksna je. To je de... 
to je lateralni uh, deo uterosa, mislim to je tišek. Uh, dobro bi bilo da posle te uh, operacije se stavi malo uh, antiadhezivni geo. Obično dajam. Kasim se tu ne možda. U stvari, ofis histerskopove bez anestezije sasvim sigurna metoda da ništa nećete uštititi pacijentko, neće ništa se dogoditi. Meni se samo jednom dogodilo da sam uradio perforaciju uterusa bez anestezije, ali to je bilo ismo cele, u stvari bio je stadi, brzgotina posle carski res, tako da sam išao skos s tega bez anestezije, ali odmah je pacijentka počutila zaista močna bolečina tamo dole, tako da smo odmah završili operaciju. Ismo cele. Ismo cele su to, jedno me Serhio to radio, ismo cele sa lasferom, ali meni se to ne sviđa, mislim da je minir zektusko bolj. Mini, mini rezektoskop. Ne, ovaj, pošto ako je ovaj veliki dilatacija, to sam vidio, kad uradimo dilatacija, ismo celi se skoro ne vidi. Pošto je dilatiran i se ne vidi, dobro se ne odstranje. Sa mini rezektoskop ne treba dilatacija, samo uđem pa izrežem sve to. kontrol od moraš da kontrol od fibra on je malo se dviži tako ide tako da mora biti ruka sigurna da reže dobro kako da kažem nije kakve su bila posledice te perforacije da li je to sanirano konzervativno ništa ako nema energije nema struje ništa bez veze Sve to je isto. Da, 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 da. Ali, ali, da, da, naravno, treba to sve, to je, ali to kažem da u, u, u ambulanti imamo ultrazvuk, imamo laser, imamo sve. Tako da, do, naravno, ne može se... To, to je, to je uh, problem tega je da, što se tiče meni, da kad režimo ovde, ako bi rezali sa tako, bi videli da je već ova malo rozast od kivo i da smo već na kraju. Ovde se ne vidi. Tako da moraš biti siguran kako je i gde režiš i koliko duboko ideš. To se ne vidi. Ne, to se ne vidi. Tako da to se mora paziti, to je obavezno. Isto kao sa elektrikom. Ne vidi se, to se koagulira i ništa više. Uopšte ne krvaje. To je koagulacija u istom vremenu sa rezanjem. Tu su ponovo septome. A, evo to. Mioma. Opet kažem da ako je velika mioma, može se samo kapsula odstraniti i da miom pustimo u maternici, da to ne odstranimo. Za dva meseca će samo pasti. Tako da ne treba se odstranivati. To je isto enukleacija sa rezektoskopom. Mi smo počeli raditi više to. Ne rezektoskopije rezanje, nego enukleacija. Pošto je to bolje, kako se kaže, za tkivu maternici je bolje to. 
Žeš, kad, rad, kad radimo a, rezanje s rezektoskopom, mi kada bo, da, da zagrebemo tako dobro miomo u glubini, obično ostranimo zdravo tkivo. Kad radimo nukleacije, samo prerežimo kapsula i ona sama izlazi. Samo je pom... Može, ako je veći, može se ostaviti, da. Da, i on sam pada. Ima. Imamo, imamo, ali ne, nije, nije, to, nije to ideja. Pošto ovaj sam ursalator, ovaj nož koji je reže, to je, to je skupa stvar. Imamo, mi imamo ovaj truklijer u naš. Radimo sa truklijerom. Polipe, mislim, sve to je T-shape ponovo. Ako je, ako je doktor radio do sada sa, sa bilo koji bipolarni elektrod kisteroskopski, isto je sa vlasa. Jedina je razlika da ovdje nema ništa, ništa ne boli, samo je vrućin, toplina, ništa više. Princip rada je isti. Da, 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 ona kaže ne. To je samo kao toplina. Neka, neka zaista da se ne izdrži. Ali čuti. Obično, recimo, kad e, ja sam probao da adenomejozo tako, ulazim u, u adenomejozo i e, stavio sam nastavke tamo 6 vata, samo pritisnem pedal, odnosno samo čekam. I kad ona kaže, sam, uvek pitam, to je bez anestezije, šta čutite? Ona kaže, ništa, ništa, ništa. I recimo za 20 sekunda ona kaže, sad čutim vrućina. To znači da već adenomejozo, ovo tkivo koje je pato, patološko, već ne postaje, već je a, volne lasera su stigle tamo gdje je zdravo tkivo. I ona već čuti vrućina. Tako da to znači da ja moram završiti to. Da ne, mogu, da ne moram više raditi sa lasero, da ne bi oštedio uterosa. Zaista to, to je... Ko agulira režiju u istom času? Ništa. Zaista jednostavno. A morate paziti kad bi radili septum, samo to sam zaboravio vam reći, a, morate biti najmanje 5 mm od ostijom. Ima, da. To je veoma bitno. To je jedina stvar koja morate kad bi radili septum. Da imate bar 5 mm minimalno od, od ostijom. To je to. Ne vidimo šta još imamo. Evo to je, samo se malo raširi, proširi se, ništa više. Znate, za, za te male stvari ne treba, dobro, ipak da to bude u anestezije nije bitno, ali ne treba operacijska sala, znate. To zaista ne treba. Anestezija možete raditi svuda. Ipak u neke privatne a, ambulante ima i mogućnost za, za kratko trajnu anesteziju. Ali ne treba operacijska sala, to su velike, kod nas naši finansni, finansni direktor uvek kaže svaki ulazak u operacijski sali košta najmanje 300 eur. Svaki ulazak. Ne možeš raditi, mislim, operacije za manje pare. Pošto to, to su pare. Nije samo to a, a, plaća anesteziologa, anesteziološke sestre, operacijska sestra, doktora, nego oprema koja je unutra. Sada sam vam pokazao, ova, ova stane recimo 10 puta manje nego ova veliki stop sa, sa sve te opreme, ne? Onda to se mora platiti. To je, to je operacija, to je, to, je, to je svaki ulazak u operacijski sali stane puno par. Tako da to je ne isplati se. Nije bitno da li smo privatno ali a, državno ustanovo. I smo se levo to što smo rekli. To smo radili, to je u stvari Serhiju u radio u našoj bolnici. Tada je bio jedan workshop sa a, Gubini i je pokazao svoj mini rezektoskop i tada je Serhiju rekao ja bi probao sa laserem. Evo to je radio to. Mislim da je to njegovo. Mislim on je to radio. Nije neke, neke velike, ne, neko veliko ismo cele, ali dobro, vidi se.
a read over. Cilj tega je da se ova fibrotična tkiva odstrani. I to je, neke kolege radi samo tako po prednjoj steni tamo gde ispod cele, ali Gubini kaže da obavezno se mora odstraniti fibroza u krogu, 36 stupin, po celu. Ne samo prednje steno tamo gde je brzgotina, ali i zadi isto. I obično kad mi radimo, ja radimo ninje zektoskopom ispod cele, kad se reže ova zadnja stena, isto se čuti da je to fibroza, da je tvrdo tkivo, da nije normalno. Ustrava fibroza nesta nekad to. Evo vidite, sad po zadnji stenji radi. To je dermoita laparoskopska. Vidite kako se kogulira. Evo to. Dobro, velike, velike žile, mislim, to se ne može sa vas, neće biti. I to je sasvim površinsko, 5 mm samo u gubini. 5 mm. Ali nije kao CO2. To je kapsula. Evo kako smo rekli, da se samo to koagulira sasvim površinski. Evo. I to uopšte ne ošteti u varijalnom tkivu. Evo. Ne treba ni tišivanje, ništa.
Vidite da ovde se ne treba zameniti, mislim da jedan koagulacija, jedna, jedna, mislim, jedna, nešto za prerezanje, nešto za koagulacija, za rezanje, za... sve je to samo jedan instrument. Sad morat ćemo malo uh, uraditi bolji instrument da se isto može uh, palpirati, da se malo adhezi od stran, da se malo povuče, tako da bit će još bolji instrument, nadam se. Evo, to je to. No contact mode, dovoljno. On samo samo ide. To je bilo tada kad je on bio kod nas, 2018. Endometriozis ponovo. Mislim da je to... Ne znam da je isti slučaj. Možete vidjeti kako ovdje izgleda. Skoro se ništa ne ušteći ovari. To je njuma. I trestin. I trestin. Veoma bitno kad se radi miome, da samo preređemo kapsulu i stavimo ovaj, ne znam kako se kaže, ovaj, Skrudrava, da, da. I će ga samo uzmemo tako dobro, odmah se krvaren zaostavi, pošto to pritiska sve teže. Da, da, da. Ovdje još nismo u pravom planu. Još je to kapsula, što se vidi. 
Evo, sad je već dobro. Vidite ovo što se vidi koje drži još mi ovo, samo to se mora prerediti. To uopšte ne kravari. Šijem, naravno. Ali to je, kako se kaže, život kivo. To nije ušećeno se od, recimo, koagulacija, karbonizacija, bilo šta. Vidite da je skoro sve to tako svežo, dobro prekravareno. I kad se samo to dobro zašije od vas prata, recimo, to je sasvim dobro za četiri meseci može slobodno da krene. Evo vidite, sve je to sasvim površinsko. Uopšte ne ide u gubini. Sad treba šivanje. Naravno da ovo se ne može zaostaviti sa vas. To se mora šivati. Ništa. Mi uvek koristimo ovaj V-lock. I ovo to je histerektomija sa lazara, ali to smo samo jednom uradili kao demonstracija, to ne ide. Može se sve uraditi, osim uterine. Neće biti, sa lazara neće biti. Tako, da. Ako vam zanima još neke video spotovi što se tiče diodni laser u hirurgiji, to su YouTube kanala od dr. Stamenov koji je vlasnik naše klinike i Serhiju Haimović. Možete vidjeti puno spotova, embrioskopije, abortus u kornu, mislim u ostiumu sa laserom od strane. Tako da ima puno spotova. Ipak tamo Serhio je pokazao isto ovaj destrukcija mioma sa ovaj veći laser. Tako da ima puno, puno, puno slike što se tiče toga. To je zaista bitno koliko je moć lasera, koliko vremena i koliko je velikost mioma. To je on to. 
nismo nikad probali, pošto to je bio kao neki početak od Serhija, a mislim da još nije to u praksi. Rekao da nije toliko jednostavno, ne ide tako dobro da za sada nije kao neki problem. Da, 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 isto je, isto je. Ali ovaj, to je sonata, mislim, sonata to je sa ultrazvukom dođe, samo se tamo stavi, ali to je kao koagulacija. Nego ovde sve to, nema ga, nestane, nema ga, uopšte, kao da ga nije bio nikad. Ali to je zaista velika, velika struja je vlasna. Velika moć. Evo, to je to od mene za sada. Ako ima još neko pitanje, Pa dobro, to je samo neka slika. Sve je to iskustva i da se sve to proba i tako. Ako vi imate potporu od kompanije da vam ta ponudi da to probate jednu nedelju da vidite kako to ide, bit će jednostavno. Da. Pa naravno. Tako je. Hvala Dimitri na sjajnoj prezentaciji. Ja ću vas sad sve zamoliti da se ovde zajedno slikamo ispred ovih banera i lasera i onda ćemo vam pokloniti, dobit ćete vam poklončić ima i iz naše vinarije vino. Još nešto. Thank <laughs> you.